to week 14. Uh, this week I wanted to show you a piece of software called Affinity Designer. Uh, while this won't be a full-fledged review, hopefully it'll be uh, a helpful overview of what the software is capable of. Um, and honestly, I, I would heavily recommend that you try it out, um, especially if you're interested in design at all. Um, I am using Adobe Illustrator for the vast majority of what we're doing with Mealtime, um, though Daniel is almost exclusively using Affinity Designer. And so even that in and of itself speaks very, uh, very highly to the compatibility between the two pieces of software. Um, I have access to Creative Cloud and he does not. And so we needed to solve the problem without spending $30 a month for him to access the, uh, the Illustrator files. And so um, I had heard about Affinity Designer a while back. They're creating some really beautiful software and extremely capable software. And so uh, we decided to give it a whirl. And so here we are. So I wanted to give you an overview of, of what it does so that you can decide uh, whether or not it's worth trying. I would already tell you it is. If you're watching this video, interested in it, I say give it a shot. Um, they have presets very similar to Illustrator. Um, you have print, uh, photo, web, devices, etc. And really all that does is that just gives you access to a certain page size. So we'll do iPad, Mini, Retina. Um, and then you can choose a bunch of other things. We have dimensions and include margins and all those kinds of things. So your typical uh, feature set. Um, a few things that I really like. Um, up here they have a feature. It's called Force Pixel Alignment. What that does is that make sure that your vector points are aligned with the pixels. Um, the reason that's uh, important is that uh, sometimes I will send Daniel graphics and they will not be exactly the way that he would like them to be. Um, or in the case of some of the things we're doing, we're actually, um, by we, I mean Daniel. Uh, Daniel is coding um, the essentially the, the, for, the formulas of the vectors that we're creating so that we can have some uh, random generation or you know really rendering things on the fly and so having the pixel alignment is helpful so that he doesn't have really weird numbers to deal with um, the other thing here is this giant magnet and the magnet is snapping uh, for the type of illustration that i do snapping is very helpful and so i like the fact a lot um, it gives me um, it gives me a bunch of presets uh, let's try ui design we'll see what happens there um, and then it gives me a bunch of other things, just all of these ways I can customize and hone in snapping to be exactly what I want. I love that because that's very helpful for the way I illustrate. Um, the other thing that's important to note is there's three different, they call them personas. The first is draw persona. Uh, the tool set over here looks similar to what Illustrator would provide you. You have your pen tool, uh, which gives you your ability to make vectory, shapey, liney things. Uh, and then you have a bunch of other presets up here uh, that give you flexibility to customize how you do things. Um, and now you have a vector shape. One really cool thing in my mind is that um, when you double tap, it shifts from your move tool to your basically your white arrow uh, tool or your node tool. Um, it's a cool little thing I think is that you can just click on the lines and create some really fun uh, shapes, basically just bending the lines. Um, and then when you click on a node, it lets you know, oh, hey, there's some, uh, you know, there's some other ways to customize this shape. And so this is very familiar to uh, Illustrator users, uh, but it's just kind of a, a cool and kind of a clever way to interject access to a new tool that gives you some flexibility. And again, this isn't something that Illustrator can't do. It's just nice to have a new tool or a different, uh, a different set of tools uh, put in front of you. Um, the next one, actually, here, let me leave this up real quick, and uh, let me change the fill color here, and then I'm actually going to get rid of my stroke. Okay, so now we have a red vector shape thing. Um, but then when you switch over here to your pixel persona, your tools totally change. And so one of the things that comes up is a paintbrush. I'm saying, okay, well, I wonder, I wonder what the paintbrush does for me. Um, I know it's a paintbrush, but I don't, I don't, know exactly what paintbrush is going to do in a pixel mode. Now, I'm pressing and holding and drawing right now, but it's it's stopping me and it's saying, oh, that assistant window that popped up, it basically was saying, we are creating a second layer for you to be drawing on um, that is a, a pixel layer. And so I was actually drawing with, it um, uh, looks like I was drawing with transparent actually, but what it's done for me is it's within this layer, it's kind of now given me a, a second layer within. It's almost a um, kind of a hierarchy of things. 
I'm I'm drawing right now, and you can even see there's jagged lines. Like this is raster, what I'm drawing. I'm drawing like pixels, not vectors. And so, let's zoom in. Uh, let's just do that. I mean, it, it's very clear that these are different. So this is vector over here, and then this is um, the pixel of the raster images over here. Now I can I can move these. And I'm, I'm given now this really bizarre, in some ways, kind of hybrid of things. So it's like, oh, I just, I drew raster on top of a vector. Well, I would usually have to do that in, in, a, in two different pieces of software with the Adobe Suite. And so they've kind of, well, not kind of, they have literally merged these two things together to be one very robust and, and um, powerful uh, application. And then the last thing that they've included is a dedicated export persona. And so uh, you can create slices. You can, I love this feature here. I can export a 1x, 2x, or 3x. And so there's even this recognition of the fact that you're going to create one image and need to export at different sizes. Then you also have your standard exports over here, very similar to a safer web and uh, Illustrator, or even Photoshop. And so now these different personas allow you to get really kind of honed in on what it is that you're looking to accomplish. And, um, it gives you the, the essentially it gives you the ability to, to kind of hyper focus on a specific thing with all within the context of a single application, which I love. So real quick, I just will draw um, kind of a, a general shape and um, play around with some shading just to sort of replicate the, the typical style uh, of things that I'll do um, in Illustrator, just so you can see that it's I mean, it's really straightforward, the, the work that you do here. So um, this, uh, this piece of software actually reminds me quite a bit of um, when uh, Quark Express kind of lost its foothold in the page layout software world. Um, I, was, uh, I remember checking out Adobe InDesign 1.0, <laughs> and I remember thinking to myself uh, that it, it just it wasn't there. And I, I didn't know a lot about design at the time. I was, um, I think probably a sophomore or a junior in college studying design. But I remember thinking this piece of software is just not, it's not ready yet. And then I tried a, uh, InDesign 2.0. And I remember being just um, kind of caught off guard with how much improvement they had done. And so um, that, that was really when people were, were willing to consider InDesign as an alternative. And so that's sort of how I feel with this right now. Adobe is still making great products. So that, that's the interesting twist. Quark was, um, was dominant because, yes, it was a good product. But the reason people were frustrated is that um, the customer care side of things was lacking, to say the least. And so um, when Adobe unleashed its... Uh, its new pricing structure, which was essentially a subscription model. Uh, a lot of people were frustrated by that. Uh, and even for us on a, on a pragmatic level, we were limited by the fact that that's the way that they're establishing it because now Daniel can't have access to it. You know, if it's a matter of buying a piece of software, that's a little different because you're not sort of uh, a slave to a monthly fee. So um, it's really an interesting time. I've seen a lot of Photoshop alternatives as well that, have, that are coming out that are really, really attractive and I think are very capable. And so um, we're in an interesting season when it comes to these things. Um, I can already tell that the UI snap to point stuff isn't working exactly as I would like. Well, let me actually zoom in here and check. Oh no, looks like we're doing, oh yeah, yeah, okay. You can see this little creeping thing that's happening here. This is one of the difficulties of, um, you know, kind of working on uh, from a distance, I guess, as opposed to zoomed in, is you, you begin to miss some of these things, the precision on them goes away. And so uh, easy enough to snap back to point, but uh, uh, probably a different preset would be more helpful for me. Um, and then uh, let's see here. Let me go through, and there's our last one. We'll add a little white to that one to lighten up the top. Uh, let's do a lighten again. Oh, one thing I'll I'll show you that I really like. Usually, when you do a uh, an eyedropper tool, it'll change the color. Instead, what it does here is it locks it in here, so I can say, "Oh, that is the red that I'm looking for," and then I can select it. Now you can you can um, really use that to your benefit when you are like me and, and choose the wrong color frequently. <laughs> so that really is a helpful thing for me to not have to go back a through a back 
a few different steps. Now, what it does not do, at least not that I've figured out yet, it does not uh, pull the information from your um, from your section over here. So you can see this is 100%. It's still on Lighten, but it's 100%. Uh, and it's not the same as this one, which is 15% lighten. So this is actually a different color, which is okay. But um, it's really nice in uh, in uh, Illustrator uh, to be able to just kind of fly through everything uh, and not have to worry about going back through and, and changing all of the different um, layer modes. So, I mean, there's some, you know, arbitrary shape with some dimension to it. I'd probably... Um, Let's see here. I'd probably go through here and I would uh, move this. This uh, the the key commands are the same in terms of layer order and things, and so and, and many others. You know, copy paste um, uh, using the space bar to trigger your hand, etc. All those things um, so far that I've discovered have been uh, the same, and so that's actually been very helpful for keeping this to be a fast transition, and so. Um, even if you are a Photoshop user, um, I think it would, or sorry, an, uh, an um, Illustrator user, I think it would be quite beneficial to consider playing around with this. Um, I, I've really enjoyed it, and I think it's going to be the kind of thing that is not just a nice piece of software for people who are kind of too broke to invest in Illustrator, but I think it's actually it has the potential to be something that's a, a pretty significant uh, improvement over uh, over Illustrator, as wild as that may sound. Uh, it just, it's gonna present you with some new features that will be um, very, very beneficial. And I think for me what it does is it, it just changes the way I approach solving a problem because I have a different set of tools um, presented in front of me. So. Uh, so yeah, anyway, there's a kind of a brief overview of, of what the, the software does. And um, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of it so far. Um, you know, like any piece of software, the more you get to know the, its kind of nuances and personalities, the, the better you'll be at leveraging it for what you're trying to accomplish. But uh, if you're considering some degree of vector software, um, this is definitely a good one to take a few minutes to check out their, uh, they have a trial on their website. It's a 10 day trial and, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice piece of software and, uh, worth considering. So I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, but yeah, there you go. Affinity designer.